we might produce some baby reticulated pythons. Gosh, I am so excited. I cannot wait for baby skinks. Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog from my slightly colder than Mexico, Michigan. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I'm actually heading to the shop. And I am back here at the shop. It is so awesome to be back here at BHB. And I hope that the start of your day is absolutely amazing. I'm here alone today and I gotta be totally honest with you. It is overwhelming to get in here and see the place and think, what am I gonna look at? There's so much to see. But I will tell you this much, the crew did an amazing job. I mean, the place looks super clean. It smells good, the cages look good. I tell you what, I have an amazing crew and it's great to come back and not have the place a disaster. You guys know when you're coming back for a trip the last thing you want to do is come home to something that's a disaster so my crew is amazing and I thank them so much as for today I think we're gonna go around and kind of check up to see what's going on as far as what's been breeding while we're gone and just get an overall idea of what's been happening here at B what do you say we have an absolutely amazing today push all our problems aside and just enjoy ourselves. can you do me a favor and go down in the comments and let me know what you liked about the Mexico trip also tell me how your day is because I love reading about you guys and while you're down there can you smash that like button Let's go ahead and check out the place and see what's going on. All right, so this time of year, I call it snake breeding blindly because basically what you're doing is you're just putting males and females together, any male and female together, trying to get them to breed. Kind of get those juices flowing at the beginning of the year. Now, we're going to ultrasound probably later this week, and I'm going to really take you on a deeper process of what it's like, the philosophy behind breeding. But basically what we're doing is we're trying to get a first copulation for as many females as we can with as many males as we can. And and then we'll ultrasound and then we'll start breeding a little bit more smartly. And what I mean by that is that we really want to get a copulation about 10 to 12 millimeters on most pythons. And then after that breeding, we'll literally shelf them for about three weeks until we'll try again. So in a perfect world, what you want to do is breed at 10 to 12 millimeters, 20 to 22 millimeters, 30 to 32 millimeters, and basically they ovulated about 35 to 40 millimeters. So three to four breedings is basically all you need for the year. Regardless, I'm going to go ahead and just look around Number one, see the breeding marks on here so that I can get an idea of what bred when I was gone. And secondly, see if anything's hooked up today. All right, so this albino clown bred to a heck clown is breeding, and I can see that it bred one other time right here. So this is the second copulation for the year. Okay, so the clown male is hooked up too. Again, he bred one other time as well. So this also is his heck and copulation. Okay, as you can see, this albino's in shed. Remember, I talked to you about this before. Typically, when a male goes into shed, he won't breed. Sometimes we'll put the male in anyways, just to get the male and female kind of interacting. But with this guy, he's already been with this female before, so I'm gonna go ahead and separate him, get him back in his cage, let him shed out. About a week from now, he'll be back with females. We can see that, that is actually a pewter enchi banana bred to a super cinnamon. That's gonna be a really cool combination. And we can see right there, that's actually a pastel mimosa, which is a pastel ghost or hypo champagne ball python. And that's bred to a black pastel het for ghosts. Okay, so this pastel crystal is not breeding, but take a look at this right here. This Mojave is doing something that's called bowl wrapping, which basically is something that a lot of females would do as they're developing follicles. They just wrap around the bowl on the cool side of the cage, and that's a really good sign. She also looks a little bit light too, something that we call glowing. So as they grow bigger and bigger follicles, they start to get this kind of glow before they go. You can see this calico pin yellow belly is trying to breed. He's got his tail underneath the female, just like this right there, but he's not hooked up yet. So we're gonna go ahead and slide him in and let him go. With any luck, he'll probably be breeding within an hour or so. And that's another example of a pastel ivory trying to breed a pastel yellow belly. Uh, he's got his tail kind of almost there, but not quite ready. And you'll see that a lot in the beginning of the breeding season. The females aren't quite as receptive to breeding, so that happens. So he's gonna continue to try. Eventually, she's gonna go ahead and start growing follicles, and then she'll be receptive. So these are all really good signs. So things are looking really good. 
that pastel champagne is hooked up with the pinstripe. So, so far, I mean, I'm going through it and there's a lot of breeding. A really similar thing is happening here. See this tail right there? That's actually a banana motley bee and this is a pastel genetic stripe. So he is almost locked up. All in all, when I went through everything, it looks like we have about 20 males hooked up, which has been about typical for each day. So it is a really good start to the breeding season. We're only about a week in and we have a lot of locks. Now what's gonna happen over the next maybe, I don't know, month or so, is we'll start to find some males that just don't wanna breed. And then we have to start switching, right? So now all our groups are kinda set. Like this male's breeding to these four or five females and so on and so on. And as the year goes on and males don't wanna breed, then we have to kinda switch our groups around. We have some extra males that we'll start to put into the groups. So that's when it becomes a little bit more just kinda throwing that blind breeding, like I mentioned, into a little bit more strategy where you're going like, all right, these girls are growing follicles. They need a male to make sure that they breed and so on and so on. So that's going to happen over time. But right now, the beginning has been absolutely incredible. One of the best starts of the year. Although I was a little bit late, that's why things are maybe breeding so well. But this is one of the best starts of the year I've had in quite a while. We're also breeding spotted pythons, children's pythons, and sabu pythons. But I don't see any locks when I was gone. So it's still early in the season. And remember, I told you I'm getting a group of children's spotted and Stimson's pythons this coming week. So that's really going to help our group with a whole bunch of new males and new females that are ready to breed. This is super exciting. Remember before I left, the male Woma was trying to breed one of my females, but she wasn't quite ready. Well, it looks like this girl actually bred two days in a row. So the male is definitely breeding. We have four females that he's breeding this year, but he's got one female locked so far. We just have to continue to cycle him through the other females because producing three or four clutches of Woma pythons this year will be absolutely incredible. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. You know, I'm a snake guy. I love snakes, but I really love all animals and all reptiles. And one of the things I'm the most excited about. I don't want to say the most excited, but certainly extremely excited are my blue tongue skinks this year. They are doing so well. I had told you the story that last year I kind of hibernated them a little bit weird and kept them down too long. I didn't even start putting males and females together till the end of February, early March. And I basically just had the vast majority of my males just wanted nothing to do with the females. I mean, I couldn't even get them to copulate whatsoever. I think we had three or four lots total last year. Well, this year we are killing it. While I was gone, Jessica was sending me pictures and she was updating me and we've had dozens of locks already. Just a week and a half into breeding, we've already had dozens and dozens of males breeding females. It is so exciting. And by the way, some of my favorite males were really doing some good breeding. Take for instance, this sunrise male right here. He's been breeding everything that Jessica has thrown in him. I mean, this is a little stud muffin here. He has just been going to town. But like I mentioned before, when it comes to blue tongue skinks, in all honesty, once they start breeding, you got to really go after it with them because sometimes they'll only breed for two or three weeks total for the entire year and that's basically it. So basically how the cycle works is you cool them down a little bit, kind of go into a dormant period, not incredibly dormant, just down into maybe the low 70s, even the upper 60s if you really want them to get cool. But then warming them back up in the daytime to the upper 70s, lower 80s, that's kind of their dormant period where they go off of food. Now the males and females will come out of that dormant period once you warm them back up to that 83, 84 with a 95 degree hot spot. And both males and females will actually shed out. Once they shed, that's when they want to breed. As soon as a male sheds out of dormancy, he is going to go to town if he's going to breed whatsoever. So you've got to really go after it at that point. And like I said, this male, along with some of my other beautiful males, are really breeding well. So gosh, I am so excited. I cannot wait for baby skinks because last year we had such a horrible year. Oh my God, if we produce a whole bunch of skinks this year, I am going to be over the top. Just wait till they're born, guys. It is so adorable. There's still no locks on my big boa here. She's doing extremely well and eating like crazy, which is exactly what you want for a female boa constrictor. But unfortunately, the males haven't locked up with her yet, but I have not given up, because trust me, she's gonna produce for me this year, or at least I'm gonna try my best to get her to produce. Little baby boas are so cute, and it's been several years since I've had a litter of baby boas, so I sure hope she goes this year. She is just a beast, and I love her so much. Oh my God, little baby boas are gonna be so awesome. And guess what, guys? I have not bred big snakes in over 10 years. And I've said it before, I'm not against breeding big snakes. I'm not against people owning big snakes. I just chose personally not to breed them about 10 years ago because I was producing a pretty good number of Burmese and some reticulated pythons. And I just decided I couldn't really control who they went to. And I just didn't feel like putting animals up on a website and just anyone buying them. Not again that I'm against that type of thing. I just personally thought that the big snakes are something that I really wanted to vet 
people. And I want to say, are you responsible enough to keep a big animal? Now we only have a handful of bigger snakes, and I kind of feel like if I produce one or two or even three clutches eventually of big snakes, whether it be reticulated pythons or Burmese pythons eventually, that's not going to be too hard to find, say, 30 or 40 or 50 or even 60 responsible people that can actually care for big snakes. Because we never want there to be an accident, right? So if there's an accident with, say, a corn snake or a boa constrictor, it's not that big of a deal. But when there's an accident with a 17 or 18 foot snake, it can kind of make big media news. And we don't want that to happen because it can harm the industry. So again, I think now I'm at a point where I could probably produce a small number of these animals and really vet the people that I want to own them. That's not to say that even someone like me can't have a mistake happen. It's completely fine. And again, I want to continue to stress, I am not pointing my fingers at anyone saying that anyone is doing anything wrong. It's a personal decision. With that being said, Titan here has been in with Lucy for the last week and he is breeding. He's starting to go into shed now. That's why he looks so dingy and kind of dark. So I'm going to let him be by himself for the next four or five days shed out and then we'll get him back in with Lucy and with any luck we're going to have some little babies. Now he's actually a titanium tiger and of course she is a tiger head for albino. So we could get some super tiger titaniums. He might even be head for albino so then we would get some albinos in there. Going to be some absolutely gorgeous babies. I don't know. I'm hoping I'm making the right decision but I really love hatching out big snakes. I mean those big eggs are absolutely incredible. I don't know. I may even try to throw him in with Daisy although I'm really not sure about that. I'm going to wait to see what happens with Lucy first. I wanted to give you the update that with any luck we might produce some baby reticulated pythons. I would be so excited. As for now, I'm going to get Titan put away and let him get a little rest. Now, I've mentioned in the past that some snakes breed in the spring and others breed during the cool down in the winter time. When it comes to the rainbow boas, like Brazilian rainbow boas, Colombian rainbow boas, they'll actually breed after the cool down. So we cool them just like the other pythons, which is basically just dropping the temperature a little bit at night, which kind of naturally happens. And then we cycle their temperatures a little bit with the heating stuff. And then as soon as they warm up, we start putting them together. Although I did mention I had a gravid female Brazilian from last year, which is really unusual that she'd be grabbed this late in the year, but we'll see if she has good babies. I'm a little bit concerned because usually when they breed off season like that, they usually have a lot of bad babies or slugs and fertile ova and stuff like that. But hey, with any luck, we'll get some more baby Brazilians even sooner than I think. But these guys are going to be breeding in about a month and a half or two months. So during this time, again, we're cooling them, but we're also feeding the females as much as they want to eat so they can beef up getting ready for their breeding season, which is just around the corner. Now, interestingly enough, the Sandboas are kind of an atypical seasonal breeder. And what I mean by that is they'll kind of breed 12 months of the year. So it's more of a food cycle thing. And when you put the males and females together, they'll produce. I've literally produced rough scales, canyons, javelins, 12 months of the year. Every single calendar month of the year, I've produced these guys before. So basically, when you want to have babies, say five or six months from now, you start to put the males and females together. And what's weird is some pythons and boas are similar in the fact that it's as much about cycling the food as it's cycling the temperatures. Reticulated pythons are another thing. You can literally produce reticulated pythons all year round. If you want to produce in January, you just go back, say, five months and you start to actually increase the food amount and then start putting males and females together. And that's exactly how we do it with sand boas as well. So these guys are kind of at the end of their cycle. We have a handful of females ready to have babies anytime. And then in another few months, we'll start putting them back together so that we'll have babies again the end of the summer if that makes sense so it's kind of interesting how snakes work that way right it's not a cookie book thing for every single type of snake you don't just start putting all the snakes together at the same time some breed during the winter some breed in the spring and with sand boas and even reticulated pythons you can basically breed them whenever you want i tell you what now that i'm back my trip and i've had a little bit of break to kind of recoup all that energy and i see all these snakes breeding i am so freaking excited for 2018 and producing babies it's kind of a hard thing for a snake breeder to go through that period where you're not hatching babies or you're not producing a lot of babies because that's kind of what you live for. It's a little bit of an addiction to see those eggs or to see those babies hatch or whatever the case may be. So it's exciting to kind of now look forward. And now that we're in the process and we're seeing things breed, we're seeing the development of all of those follicles. Now we can start to really project what we're going to produce this year. It's going to be so exciting. I cannot wait to take you guys on this journey over the next few months. You guys are going to follow along and see how these things go. As a matter of fact, I was almost 
thinking. What do you guys think about taking one specific animal, whether it's a ball python or whatever, go ahead and comment down below and maybe we can update that specific animal, that one female, and see how she's going. We can follow the follicle development as she goes, as she becomes gravid, as she lays her eggs, all the way through hatch. Together, let's say every three or four days, I'll continue to update you how she's going and then you guys can really feel like you belong on it. So let me know if you like the idea and what type of snake you'd like to see it happen. Would it be a ball python? Do you want to do a rainbow boa? Do you want to do the walma pythons, carpet pythons, spotted children's, whatever? Let me know in the comments and maybe this week we can pick one specific animal and we can follow the entire process together. And just as a quick update, colubrids are going to be in hibernation for only about a month longer. So in about a month we're going to bring those up and then they're going to start breeding as well. So as you can see it's going to be an absolutely amazing few months of breeding snakes and then a crazy summer of hatching little babies and having little babies born. I cannot wait. I am so so excited and I hope that you guys enjoyed this little snake breeding update. I hope that you guys have an amazing day. Thank you for tuning in. You guys mean the world to me and I love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button for me? Let's get this video as many likes as possible as well as turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video which is every day seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to someone today and I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>